Hi, my name is Zach Wen, a software engineer on the Presto team at Meta. I'm glad to be here with Sergey Lavrinico to give an introduction about the Presto usage for experimentation workloads at Meta. Our talk has four sections. Sergey will first give a brief introduction about the experimentation platform, how are experiments conducted, and why are they needed at Meta. And then he will talk about the Presto usage. What does the current setup look like and where is Presto in this big experimentation platform architecture? Then I will cover the remaining two sections. From Presto's perspective, what are the characteristics we see in the queries and what are the challenges we are facing and how do we handle those issues? Let me turn it over to Sergey. Sergey, off you go. Thanks, Zach. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Sergey. I represent experimentation platform team at Meta. Experimentation platform itself is complicated and feature rich. I will cover only a small part of it to provide context related to Preston. Uh, first of all, we love to run experiments at Meta. Efficiency of most available features is preliminary measured by running them as experiments on the user subgroups. To support this, Meta has developed a set of tools to set up, launch, monitor, and analyze experiments. When engineer develops a new feature, they instrument code using experimentation API, which makes a decision whether a user participates in a certain experiment and in which group, control or test. An engineer also configures experiment by specifying its purpose, goal metrics, which they plan to improve, and guardrail metrics, which must not be regressed as a result of this code, new code. Engineer can check intermediate progress during experiment execution. At the same time, monitoring will be performed to detect possible negative impact of experiment to critical company metrics. In worst cases, experiment can be stopped. After experiment completion, the user can make a decision about feature using system generated report. This report will generate will have analysis of the experiment impact to goal and guardrail metrics. Analytic service uses two main data sources for its analysis. First source is exposures, a set of records specifying which user was participating in which experiment and in which group, test, or control at a certain time. Uh, this exposure set is stored as a Hive table. The second source is metrics, a numeric value associated with user behavior, for example, number of likes. Uh, metrics are defined as a SQL query on top of the Hive table. The system then performs a join operation on user exposures and metrics, groups user by control and test groups, and computes various statistics, mean variance, covariance. It then uses the statistics to compute contrasts, different between, difference between control and test group metrics, confidence intervals, and p-values. There are two types of supported workloads, interactive and scheduled. Interactive are used for ad hoc explorations, experiment analysis, or investigations. A scheduled workload are the queries which are scheduled by users to be executed periodically, for example, on daily or weekly basis. And also the scheduled workload is used to evaluate impact of every experiment which runs currently to critical metrics. Because Meta has billions of users in different applications and hundreds of thousands of metrics, such computations are resource expensive and we are constantly looking for ways to optimize them. In addition, analytic services provides advanced query options like optimizations, dimension slices, subpopulation analysis, clustered experiments, etc. All these queries are even more computationally expen expensive. Now, let's see how Presto is used 
to make this analysis. In the current system uh, today, uh, Presto is used to compute interactive queries, while scheduled queries are executed on Spark. Both Spark and Presto use Hive as a data source. Presto evaluates statistics for ad hoc queries on the fly and returns back to analytics service. There are about 100 end user queries uh, per minute, which results in about 1,000 query Presto queries per minute. This is ad hoc workload. Spark executes similar operations and puts intermediate results in the Hive table. This Hive table will then will be uploaded to MySQL and analytics service will use the results from this table to serve scheduled queries. Uh, there are millions of scheduled queries per day and we are doing batching and other types of optimizations on Spark to reduce their computation costs. Well, in current system, we should maintain both PESTA and Spark pipelines separately. This leads to duplication of code. This is also not very efficient because ad hoc queries are usually executed during business hours. And as a result, Presto clusters are mostly idle overnight. To solve these problems, we examined the possibility of moving all scheduled workloads from Spark to Presto. We run a set of experiments and we obtained benchmarks for the set of analytics service specific queries. We saw order of magnitude resource usage reduction on Presto compared to Spark. A later Zach will describe some Presto optimizations will help to achieve such results. The final design, as you can see, quite similar. Presto computes statistics, both for interactive and scheduled queries, but for scheduled queries, it stores intermediate results in the Hive table, which then is uploaded to MySQL database, as in previous design. This design allows us to remove code duplication and reduce dependencies on external services. We plan to use Presto to compute scheduled workload overnight and use Presto resource groups for queries prioritization during business hours. In fact, uh, today Analytics Service already uses Presto resource groups to prioritize between normal and whale queries. When user submits a query, a query parameters will be analyzed and we will estimate a CPU cost of the query execution. After that, most queries will go to normal queue and will be executed within 60 seconds. However, heavyweight queries will be assigned to whale queue and will be executed by Presta to not impact normal query latency. In some cases, whale query can be even executed in a dedicated Presta cluster. Such approach can be further extended to prioritize interactive queries over scheduled, which is very important because we will be using shared capacity both for interactive and shared scheduled workload. As you can see, we bet a lot on the ability of Presto to execute analytics queries quickly, reliably, and efficiently. And now I hand over to Zach who will dive into Presto query patterns and optimizations. Thank you. Thanks, Sergey. What he has covered are more from a user's perspective. How is Presto utilized to support experimentation platform? In this section, I will talk from Presto, the query engine's perspective. What are the characteristics and challenges we see while handling this workload? As Sergey mentioned, there are three types of queries needed for experiment analysis. First, we need to calculate the total number of units exposed in each condition. The query pattern is pretty straightforward. What it does is basically retrieving the earliest time the unit exposed in the experiment, then calculate how many units in each condition 
have been recorded since then. Then we have Westernization. In this query pattern, a prox percentile is used to calculate the Westernization thresholds. So only the metric values within the thresholds will be considered for analysis, and the ones outside will be treated as extreme values and uh, will not be used. The third one is a join, which is the most expensive type among all the three. It calculates the averages and the variances for the test and the control groups. Note that it has multiple aggregation functions with ifs in sight. Also, all the queries often has a lot of date comparisons. As you can see, the query patterns in this use case are relatively fixed. That makes optimizations targeting this workload much more effective. But Presto is also facing some challenges handling this workload. The main one is its fast growing demand. In the last two years, we have observed doubled growth each year, and we are having a hard time to get this much capacity to accommodate this growth. Given that it is largely exceeding the organic growth rate, so we had to look into many other ways to support this workload. Also, as you can tell from the fact that we are categorizing the workload into normal and well, some queries can be very heavy and often ends up with out of memory failures. To address this issue, currently we are using a dedicated cluster which has higher memory limit set up to retry the queries failed because of out of memory. And we are also looking to the spill to disk feature for this use case. By enabling spilling, the engine will offload intermediate operation results to disk to lower the memory usage. Also, given that we have limited query patterns for this use case, we have implemented order-based execution, which can drastically reduce the memory footprint for operations like aggregation and join. I will talk more about the details in a later slide. So how do we leverage those characteristics and address the challenges? First, we did a bunch of SQL optimizations. Uh, a couple examples here. Um, given that a lot of data comparisons are involved in the query, we tried different date formats and observed 1.2 times latency improvement by just switching the date format from string to decimal. Also, we implemented an optimizer which rewrites aggregation E to aggregation filter. This can be enabled by the configuration property or the session property. Um, basically, it, it pushes down the filter inside um, the aggregation functions into the where condition whenever it's possible. So less data will be scanned and be processed. Even without the filter push down, in many cases, we still see sig significant improvement from the bit mask filtering, which uh, prevents the engine from evaluating the if expression. And uh, yeah, the bit mask filtering is a lot cheaper. Um, as mentioned, the join query has a lot of uh, instances of this kind of aggregation if. So this workload is able to benefit a lot from the from this optimizer. And we observed about 30% CPU reduction and uh, 3.5 times P95 latency improvement in production after we roll it out. We also improved our routing strategy to ensure better, better cache hit rate. Splits scanning the same table are often scheduled on the same node. But oftentimes it leads to the skew that some hot nodes got overloaded while some other are just idle. 
So we introduced soft affinity, which allows a secondary node serving as the backup when the primary node is busy. On top of that, when both primary and secondary node are busy, the least busy the least busy node from the rest of the nodes will be picked to process the splits. With the new routing strategy, we achieved resource efficiency by 120% more balanced CPU distribution among the experimentation platform clusters. The gap between the idlest cluster and the busiest cluster is reduced from 140% to 20%. And uh, in terms of user impact, we observed six times P95 query latency reduction. Another optimization is um, resilient affinity. As mentioned, to achieve better cache hit rate, we always want the same table lands on the same cluster. The simplified cluster selection strategy looks like this. We calculate the hash code based on the table name in some way and uh, mod the number of clusters. So if there are four clusters, the table with hash code one, hash code zero will go to cluster zero, table with uh, hash code one will go to the cluster one, etc. But we constantly need to take away some clusters and put them back when clusters are having issues or when um, we are rolling out a new release or just for regular maintenance. This strategy has a issue that let's say we take out cluster one and now the table one needs to go to the cluster two and uh, almost all the tables afterwards need to find a new cluster to land on where the cache is not available yet. It results in, it costs like data reshuffling. Therefore, we introduced uh, consistent hashing, which basically when a cluster is taken out, we pretend it still exists. Only the queries which are supposed to land on the on this particular cluster will be redirected to a new one. This routing strategy um, helps keeping the hash keeping the cache um, in place as much as possible. And we re reduced the data shuffling by 90%. And we have uh, admission control. Presto clusters are shared resources. We only have so much capacity to process queries. So spamming it makes the experiments worse for everyone. We Often found the system got abused by certain users taking too much resources. So we introduced admission control, which allows us to set per user limit on CPU usage or query count on different time granularities. If a user exceeds the threshold at any given time window, their access to make further queries will be automatically blocked. It enabled us to catch bad users from taking too much resources and also to block the testing traffic during peak hours, given that very limited um, capacity we have for production traffic. Automation control has greatly improved the reliability and the protected the system so that we can serve everyone um, experimentation platform fairly and uh, more efficiently. And then we, um, to leverage the query patterns and to address the memory issues, we implemented order-based execution. Taking aggregation as an example, the traditional hash-based aggregation requires a hash table to be built and maintained throughout the aggregation process. But if the group by key is already in order, by enabling streaming aggregation, there is no need to build such a hash table. 
During the aggregation, if there is a new key observed, it is guaranteed that the current key has been exhausted and uh, it is safe to just emit the results. And we also introduced um, segmented aggregation, which helps the queries that only a subset of the group by keys is sorted. It breaks down the it breaks the input into small segments based on the sorted key. We still need to maintain a hash table for each segment, but similar to streaming aggregation, once the current sorted key has changed, we know the current segment has been exhausted. We can just drop the hash table and then return the, re re the results, which can significantly reduce the memory footprint. And uh, you might have known there is an ongoing project named um, Prestissimo, AKA Presto on Vlogs. It rebuilds um, Presto worker using C++ and the Vlox library for efficiency and tighter memory control. We are targeting to onboard experimentation platform as one of our first use cases when it's ready for production. In a recent test, we replayed the production queries for from experimentation platform for one week. Comparing to our current Java-based stack, we observed uh, 10 times latency reduction and more than three times CPU improvement. The results look very promising and we are very excited to productionize it in the future. Um, that's all from us. Uh, we would be happy to take any questions. Great, and I think, uh, oh, Sergey, hi, good to see you, and Zach are both here on um, on the line ready to take any questions. So if anybody has anything, you can feel free to put it into the, the chat section or the Q&A section, and we can get to those. But I'll just say thank you. What an, uh, a great presentation. It was really nice to dive into more of the technical specifics around what Meta is doing um, with, with Presto on, on this um, experimentation platform. So really innovative and, and cutting edge stuff going on. Um, OK, so when, uh, when will you introduce Parquet and Prestissimo is a question that just came in. Uh, Sergey, anybody want to take that one? Yeah, thanks for asking this question. But uh, uh, I'm not leading the um, Prestissimo um, project, so maybe we can come. Maybe sure. you can reach out to me offline. Maybe I can connect you to the right person. Yeah. Great. Uh, somebody else asks for the batch workloads. Is that done using Presto on Spark? Uh, no. Um... I can answer this, I can, you can actually add if I miss anything. Uh, so no, we, we actually decided not to do it on Spark. We we found the patterns, uh, the, we have like a certain query pattern specifically for experimentation um, uh, needs. And uh, we found an efficient way to batch multiple queries together and execute them on Presta and achieve like a similar savings and which can which we currently achieve on spark as well so so today we are we are doing this on spark but we actually run benchmarks and we know that we can do the same thing in presta and even um, save some resources as a result great all right folks if there are more questions we have a few more minutes left Let's see here. All right. I think we can wrap. So appreciate it, Zach and Sergey. Great presentation.